In the glittering halls of Imperial Hotel, Sharon Otieno sat pretty savoring a full-course five-star breakfast on December 2017, finally feeling all her stars aligning. She was rich and now living the life she had been dreaming of. The man who was financing her expensive lifestyle was at the time, the governor of Mikuri County Okoth Obado, and the two were entangled in a clandestine love affair, popularly known as the sponsor culture. Little did she know, the stars that once aligned so brightly would soon be veiled by the shadows of tragedy. On September 4, 2018 her lifeless body was discovered in a thicket in Kodera Forest, and a post-mortem revealed she had possibly been raped and stabbed eight times in the neck, abdomen and back. Here are the sequence of events that led to her untimely demise as obtained from various blogs found online. Sharon Bilain Otieno was born in 1992 along the southern shores of Lake Victoria in Magar Village, Homo Bay County. She was the first-born child of Douglas Otieno, a lab technician and Melinda Oma. She was raised by her parents in the best way they could until she cleared high school with a mean grade of AC plus in her KCSE exams. Having missed the minimum campus cut-off point slightly and aware that her parents could not afford college fees, she traveled to Oyugi's town after lazing around at home jobless where she had landed a job at an NGO as a casual laborer. Away from her parents for the first time in her life and bubbling with life like any other youngin, Sharon met Henry Sipple, a man with whom they had their first child when she was 21. However, Henry could not step up into the responsibility of being a dad, leaving her with the burden of taking care of the child. But fate smiled once again on Sharon, and she found another man who promised to step up where Henry had failed. This man was Mr. Bernardo Kuta, a maths teacher at Tropogi High School who promised to love her and her kid because Sharon was most precious to him. This melted the heart of Sharon who had almost lost trust in men. Sharon and Bernard were blessed with two daughters who took after her dashing beauty. The two lived in love like a family at the teacher's quarters in Ropogi High School, until when Bernard decided to approach Sharon's parents in a bid to pay her dowry only to be turned down. Her parents felt that Sharon was too young to be a housewife and rather preferred Bernard to use that money to pay for her college fees, which they were struggling to raise as they enrolled her at Rongo University Town Campus for a diploma in health records and information systems. As fate again will have it, after Sharon joined campus she began to slowly lose interest in the dowry payment, breaking the heart of Bernard. Disturbed and unsettled, Bernard rented a house outside their school premises. After settling her in with their kids, he also abdicated his responsibility leaving the lactating Sharon alone in their rented house in Kamagambo Migori in November 2017. Heart broken and forced to fend for her three kids, while also having no means of arcing out a living, she had no option but to take her kids back home to her parents to seek refugee as she strategized on her next course of action. As she searched for ways to fend for her little kids and also balance that with attending school, she was totally alive to the fact that she needed to rethink her life choices and especially who she allowed into her life. She was now 25 with three kids who looked up to her for their daily upkeep, and love was no longer what she wanted but money. So being quite an ambitious girl, she asked a friend to send her a number, and straight went for the top dog in the county who was none other than the governor, Mr. Okotha Birdo, a fine 59 years old man. After exchanging several messages, she managed to ignite the thirst in him, and he gave her a personal invite to his office for an appointment, but being preoccupied with other county matters, he did not manage to see her. This was disappointing as a first date, but he made it up to her several days later in Nairobi when he invited her for a date at the Intercontinental Hotel, after he reached out to her and found out she was also in the city attending to personal matters. Astounded by her youthful beauty, Abodo became romantically involved with her and she became a part of his life. This was met in reciprocality by Abodo who financed her lifestyle with expensive dates at hotels. Whenever he was in Nairobi for official duty, he booked her flights to Nairobi for a good time, and after a hard day at work attending to the matters of the people of Migori County, he found solace in her company. Unlike her previous two relationship, her clandestine affair with the governor made sure she never lacked in terms of money, and she shared this on her Facebook page referencing a quote by Octopizo Pesa Otas. She could now afford the finer things in life. The two managed to keep their affair under wraps and away from the prying eyes of the public, meeting at their favorite joint Imperial Hotel Kisumu until a time when a worker in the Porsche Hotel betrayed their highly secretive affair by informing Abirdo's wife Helen about his husband's extramarital affair in April 2018. 
Helen Abodo then confronted her husband about Sharon via a direct phone call, but Abodo denied the allegations. He refuted the claims and denied knowing a lady by that name, while also reassuring her that she was the only love of his life. Sharon however had fallen head over heels for him and was ready to become his second wife, but for Abodo this was just another one-time affair like the rest Likini Wapi, Sharon could hear none of that. In her mind, this affair was as serious as it could be and besides that, she had already been accustomed to the finer things in life that came with dating the top dog in the county. Moreover, she was now feeling the familiar kicks inside her belly with pouts of morning sickness, something she hoped would change her life, because having a governor's child was also a blessing in disguise and she could manage to change the lifestyle of her poor folks back at home. She kept it a well-guarded secret and let the baby grow inside her until she was absolutely sure, and sent a message to Abodo to tell him of their new blessing and bundle of joy. Sharon, confident that Abodo was the father of her child, did everything she could to show him that she was proud to be carrying his baby. She took photos of her bulging tummy and ultrasound scans of the pregnancy and forwarded them to the governor. But upon hearing the news Abodo began to become elusive, reading the messages, viewing the photos and never responding. As the pregnancy progressed, Sharon became increasingly desperate for the governor's attention and support, and having used every trick in her book to warm her way back to Abodo's life including on several really desperate days, sending photos of her bump and ultrasound to the governor's family and in one instance, sent a text to Abodo's son telling him to tell his mom that she was carrying their brother, but it was to no avail. She was quickly running out of patience and time, and her desperation was compounded by the fact that relations with her husband, Bernard, with whom they had two children together, a boy and a girl were frosty because of her affair with the governor. Reality was setting in, a student without any means of support with three children including a son from a previous relationship, she was forced to move back to her mother with the three children and a fourth on the way. Meanwhile, Helen confronted Abodo again about his relationship with Sharon at their son's graduation party, this time he accepted knowing her but claimed to have called off the relationship, which was actually true. Desperate she sought help reaching out to him again but now the only answer he gave was through former candidate Ward MCA Lawrence Abonio Awar who gave her 30,000 shillings for her to procure an abortion, but was advised not to buy her mother because it could result in many complications. She had now deferred her studies due to lack of fees, and sought the help of the MCA to introduce her to a journalist who could help her expose, and Shea Mobado. Obonya Awar introduced her to Nation Media Group journalist Barack Odra, but also offered to negotiate with Abodo on her behalf. On a cold July morning, Obonyo Awar met with Abodo at Serena Hotel in Nairobi and wanted to know what Sharon wanted. The end by Abodo was given the terms, Sharon wanted a 20 million shillings house in Nairobi or Kisumu and 5 million shillings for her upkeep. Obado instead made a counter-proposal to build Sharon a three-bedroomed house on an acre of land in Homa Bay all at a cost of 3 million shillings and was prepared to pay the money at the end of the month that is August. With communication now established, Abodo paid a total of 280,000 shillings for Sharon's upkeep in two installments. It was in the midst of these going-ons that Sharon received a call from Oyemo, the governor's private assistant on September 3rd asking her to meet him at Rongo later that evening. She resisted and instead suggested they meet at Rodiko Pani which was nearer home, but Oyemo insisted they meet at Rongo. Sharon's mother cautioned her against going alone for the meeting, and she called Barack Ojua to accompany her. Oyamo is said then to have requested to meet Barack Ojua alone first before seeing Sharon, but Barack refused saying the governor's aide would have to meet them both at Graka Hotel. While at Graka Hotel, Oyamo asked that they leave, pay the bill and led them to a Toyota fielder where they headed towards Rongo with the belief that they were going to meet the governor. When nearing town, Barack suggested they have the meeting at a hotel and as they approached the hotel, they saw two men standing by the roadside. Oyamo stopped the car a few meters from the hotel to go talk with the men. But no sooner had he stepped out, than the two men jumped into the car sandwiching him and Sharon before ordering him to switch off his phone. Alarmed at this turn of events, Barok Ojua jumped out of the moving car at Nyangweso Trading Center and dashed for help injuring himself severely. The car stopped a few meters ahead and the men came after him but he managed to get away. Sharon however remained in the car. The driver of the car, Mr. Gombe during an interview with the police told them that he was ordered to get off the road near Oyugis, and the two unidentified men left with Sharon. 
Although it is not clear under what circumstances she agreed to leave the vehicle, if at all, Mr. Gombe claimed that the two men returned after half an hour and said they had taken Sharon home. They were dropped off at Jirairi and the driver Mr. Gombe returned to Megori. The following day in the afternoon, Sharon's bloodied body was found in a thicket laying in a blood-stained white track suit with her underwear and condoms around her. She had been stabbed in the neck, back and abdomen, and according to the post-mortem she had possibly been raped before bleeding to death. Her unborn son was stabbed through the spine and the knife exited through the stomach. Oyama on the other hand, reported to the police that he had been kidnapped while meeting Sharon and Ojwa at Kraka Hotel by two men driving a Toyota Axio and robbed of 270,000 shillings and his mobile phones. He claimed to have lost consciousness during the ordeal and found himself at Kizia Referral Hospital the following day. This narrative however left detectives skeptical as Oyemo's mobile phones were active around his hometown Urairi until 11 a.m. on the night Sharon died. Govan Arabodo would be arrested following weeks of public anger and protests and pleaded not guilty to the murder charges, maintaining his innocence in the matter and through his lawyer Cliff Ombeta. He argued that the DNA results linking the governor to the unborn baby do not directly implicate him in the murder. As the case prolongs in court, Obado found favor in the current Ruto administration and was appointed as UDA Nyanza manager. Thank you for watching, please like, subscribe and share this video.